And Michael Beschloss, I mean, Nixon did usher in the Southern strategy, which took the whole idea of resentment and racial resentment and weaponized it. Um, but he didn't have Fox News. He didn't have right wing media. He didn't have Breitbart. He didn't have that ecosystem that could turbocharge that to the point now where you do have a group of Americans who believe that any election that is decided largely on the basis of what minority voters want is illegitimate period, and that they don't have to accept it, and they actually don't need to accept it. I, I want to play Donald Trump. This is Donald Trump in October of 2020, this is October, before the election, making it clear that he really didn't believe that he necessarily had to accept an election he didn't win. Take a look. Right. Will you commit to making sure that there is a peaceful transfer of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots and the ballots are a disaster. I and, understand that, but and, people are rioting. Do you oh, commit to making sure that there's a no, peaceful wanna, transfer of power? We want to have get rid of the ballots, and you'll have a very trans. We'll have a very peaceful. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. There'll be a continuation. At this point, retired federal judge Michael Ludic, who's about as conservative as they come, he was he would have had, uh, I believe, the Alito seat if, if um, previous president right. had wanted it, said that Donald Trump and his allies and supporters are a clear and present danger to American democracy. They're executing that blueprint for 2024 in open and plain view of the American public. I've never uttered one single one of those words unless the former president and his allies were candidly and proudly speaking those exact words to America. Have we crossed a threshold? threshold where one of our political parties is actually a danger to our democracy. We have, uh, because uh, the majority of the Republican Party voters and uh, also leadership seems to support Donald Trump, even though on the 6th of January last year, he almost took our democracy away. You know, I always grew up thinking that conservatives were people who were love, who loved our American institutions, you know, like elections and, mm -hmm. you know, the way that the political system works. This is not a conservative party anymore. This is a party of radicals who want to destroy. And, you know, the fact that Judge Ludwig could, have, Ludwig could have come so far as to say something like that after being the darling of conservatives uh, for decades, I think almost says it all. Yeah, I mean, and they've ruined the, 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 the great name of the radical Republican. Because radical Republican actually was a good thing, right. like, in the 18th century. Yeah, it used to be. Radicals who were keeping a, on Lincoln, Lincoln's back to make sure he was tough on the South, as he should have been. Don't get me started on Hannibal Hamlin. I'll do a whole hour on Hannibal Hamlin. Don't get me started. Don't threaten me with a okay. good time. Um, <laughs> but either, <laughs> We're going to do that one day. I'm obsessed with Hannibal Hamlin. Um, you know, let's talk— a, a little bit, you know, Michael, Michael Steele, because, you know, we're at a point now where w this is what makes me nervous. There was a Yahoo YouGov poll that said half of all Americans, and this is whether you're a Democrat mm -hmm. or Republican, now predict the United States may cease to be a democracy someday. And I wish they'd asked the follow up question. Are you OK with that? Because a new survey um, conducted after the first hearing found that fewer than one in four, 24 percent said they watched the initial primetime broadcast live. Nearly half, half said they're not following these hearings at all. I'm not sure that we have enough of a critical mass of Americans that care whether we're a democracy or, or not. There are much, many more people, I think, out there who don't necessarily care one way or another. They just really want to know what's going to be the price of gas and do they get what they want when they vote for Trump or, you know, whatever other Republican they prefer. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm going to try to do my best, uh, Ari Melber, but I won't, in, in trying to recall the, 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 the song that goes, you know, you're going to miss me when I'm gone, right? Um, <laughs> and that's basically what democracy is saying to us right now as a country. Maybe how, how can I miss, miss you if you won't go away? Oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's that too. Sorry, um, sorry. No, no, but that's but that's you know essentially what the what the country is saying, what democracy say, is saying to the people of this country right now. You're going to miss me when I'm gone. You know, you guys, yeah. you guys, yeah, I get your fixation on high gas prices and inflation. Yeah, and those are important. They really are. Yes. But you know, in the final analysis, when you're standing there at the pump. Um, you know, paying two dollars again for gasoline, but instead of going to the polling place, you have to go back home because you can't vote anymore, or they strip the, the stripped your ability to do so freely. That's a problem. Yeah, and, and, and as you said, you only find out when it's too late. Normally, when democracies fall. Uh, uh, my my favorite Michaels, Michael and Michael, Michael Steele and Michael Beschloss. Uh, wishing you guys a wonderful, happy Juneteenth weekend. Thank you both for being here. Thank you.